Hey, this is Matthew, and welcome back to Nerd News Today, where once again, it's time for another Japanese wrestling figure review. And today we've got a guy that's a little bit more obscure than who we've looked at in the past. That is Michiyoshi Ohara. Ohara here has wrestled in New Japan, where he was there for over a decade, which even included a championship run. And he also wrestled in Tenru's Wrestle Association R, also known as Wrestle and Romance, aka War, and even fought in Pride Fighting, and even fought in the Pride Fighting Championship, which is a pretty big thing to say. So for a guy you've probably never heard of, he's actually accomplished quite a lot in his career. So this video is gonna hopefully tell you a little bit more about who this Ohara guy is, as well as taking a look at his very own action figure. So this figure is a Kara Pro figure, but it's a New Japan labeled Kara Pro figure. It's even got the New Japan copyright on the bottom there, you can see. Uh, it also has the New Japan logo on the top right corner. This is Superstar Figure Collection 41, and as we mentioned, that number just pertains to the number of the figure he is. And there could be more than one version of Ohara that would be part of the number 41, but really this is Ohara's one and only action figure. You see it comes with him in his black singlet and a mask. This is from his Team 2000 period. We'll talk a little bit more about that once we get him out of the box. So let's take a look at the back of this figure now as well. The back of the box here gives us another picture of Ohara. On the left, shot of his face without the mask, and on the right, a picture of him wearing the mask. The top left corner has some of his stats, and in the middle there we've got a profile or bio all about him. Obviously, I don't speak Japanese, but let me put up a Google Translate version, as best as they can give us anyway, of what that's saying on the back. And again, we have just some safety warnings and another copyright logo for New Japan. I always find it interesting how the back of the packages are always black and white, whereas the front of them are in complete color. I've never really understood that, but whatever. I'm not really keeping this figure in package anyway. He's gonna come right out of the box, and we're gonna do that right now, in fact. So let's go ahead and unleash our Ohara onto the display and take a look at him loose. All right, and here is our Ohara now out of the packaging, so you can get a better look at him from all angles here. So this is him, as I mentioned, in his Team 2000 outfit. That was where he was T2000 machine number two. Team 2000 was Masahiro Chono's stable, where you can kind of imagine like it's almost like the NWO and his group is feuding with New Japan Pro Wrestling's loyalists, as they may have been referred to. So Ohara here tagged with Tatsutoshi Goto, and together they defeated Kensuke Sasaki and Shiro Koshinaka to win the IWGP Tag Team Championships in June 1999. However, they only held the belts for about two months and eventually dropped it to Yuji Nagata and Manabu Nakanishi in August. So not a very long or memorable run, but hey, they were champions and that's a pretty big accomplishment right there alone. Now, believe it or not, some of you guys may remember him from WCW because he actually had a very brief stint there in the mid 90s and he actually came back, I think even briefly later again, a little bit later on in the 90s. Uh, his first appearance, he was managed by Sonny Ono doing like a traditional martial arts kind of gimmick because that's what he gave the guys who were Japanese in the mid 90s. He had like the same song they used for everybody practically who was Japanese in WCW at that point. Uh, there's like some commentary of him doing a match where Larry Zbysko is offering like some of the worst most racist commentary you could possibly hear even worse than like Bobby Heenan in the 80s and I love Bobby Heenan but yeah some of that stuff is uh, not the kind of thing that ages too well today. In his Team 2000 outfit where he's got the wrist tape on he's got the singlet so this is kind of a nod to a character known as Super Strong Machine. You can see on the back, we've just got the New Japan logo on his butt. Uh, we've got some knee pads here. In terms of paint job, it's a fairly nice paint job also. I just want to add here too. You can see that uh, he's got different color black on his boots and his knee pads. It's more of a glossy, shiny finish, whereas everything else you see on him is more flat, more matte paint style. Uh, his flesh is also a little bit shiny, which is pretty much akin to any of the Kara Pro or Kara Pro style figures you would have seen in this era. It kind of makes them look like they're almost a little bit sweaty. It's a nice little effect. As for the face sculpt, I think it's actually a very, very good face sculpt. I think it's actually one of the better ones that we've seen so far, in fact. It's, it's kind of surprising he got such a good face sculpt. And again, also a very good paint job. His lips are a different color. He's got really good detail on his eyebrows and his mustache and his goatee. Even the eyes are pretty nice. The hair is this nice bleach blonde color, which is totally late 90s. Uh, yeah, overall, it's actually a pretty well done figure. He also comes with something that a lot of other figures don't typically come with, and that is an accessory that just fell behind his legs. There we go. He gets a Team 2000 rubber mask that you can put on top of his face. Team 2000 and their names of machines and such is a reference to Super Strong Machine, who was a Japanese professor that has remained very popular for a long, long time. Kazushi Sakuraba even referenced him. Andre the Giant referenced him uh, in Japan. So he's done a lot. It's a pretty memorable looking character, pretty memorable looking gimmick, and very memorable mask. So that's what he's wearing here right now. And as you saw, it just slipped right on with no problems. That was very easy to get on him. It's got some pretty nice paint detail as well, much like how his body has got the two different tones of black, so too does the mask because the stitches or the laces, if you will, 
are the shinier color. The rest of the mask is mostly that flatter color. It's got some good silver. Again, very clean paint job, very simple paint job, but it gets the job done. So Ohara's pro wrestling career more or less ended in 2008 when he retired, but it's a pretty long career. He did a lot of stuff. I'm not super familiar with a lot of his work, but it seems like he was a pretty solid worker. He must have been to be a tag team champion and to do all the stuff that he did and work with all the guys he worked with. So, you know, he's probably a guy that's worth looking into a little bit more to learn more about. But I'll tell you, my most exposure to Ohara was actually not in wrestling. The first time I knew about him was from Pride Fighting Championship. So Ohara fought twice in Pride Fighting Championship. The first time was at Pride 17 where he fought against Henzo Gracie. It was kind of a tune-up match for Henzo. Uh, you know, Ohara wasn't necessarily a big threat, but he was kind of a recognizable name. And this was during that time period where Inoki was starting to throw more pro wrestlers from his league into Pride to kind of do some more cross-promoting and show that his guys are tough or whatever. So his first match was against Henzo Gracie. He then would fight again at Pride 22. Both times more or less survived, but neither time did he really look that strong. Really the best you could say is that he did survive. Uh, Pride 17, when he fought against Henzo, in fact, that's actually the, the infamous Pride event where Steven Quadros references that famous line from Enter the Dragon, and he says, Ohara, you have disgraced us with your treachery, because it was a pretty terrible, boring match. Henzo couldn't do much. Ohara just didn't do anything either, and that was part of the problem why Henzo had such a tough time beating him, and why it was ultimately a unanimous decision loss for Ohara. Ohara got a second chance at Pride 22 about a year later against Kevin Randleman, former UFC heavyweight champion and very popular fighter in Japan especially. And once again against Kevin, he lost a unanimous decision, but at least he put up a little bit better of a fight, or at least he tried to do more. Uh, most of the time he spent it just kind of trying to strong arm upper body Greco Roman wrestle at Kevin Randleman, which was a stupid mistake. And he more or less tired himself out, eventually got taken down to the ground, just pounded on. He defended by mostly just turtling. It's nothing that impressive and really not even necessarily worth watching because it's pretty boring. So yeah, that was his stint in MMA. Nothing too spectacular. Thankfully, that would be all he did. Although it should be a note that he was also actually a judo player before he did pro wrestling. And in fact, in his corner for the Randleman fight was Hidehiko Yoshida, who would go on to do a lot of big things in Pride and MMA. But that's the history lesson about Ohara. Really, we're here to talk about the figure again. And as you saw, it's a pretty good figure, actually. Uh, I'm really impressed by it. You know, the, the reason I wanted this figure in particular is because I just thought it was kind of unique and it came with this mask here, which I think is a lot of fun and really cool to have on him. But as a figure itself, I think it's pretty unique looking. It's a guy in a singlet with a mask, bleached blonde hair. I think it's very representative of the 90s and early 2000s. And it's also just interesting because it's this guy here who's you know, really never had another figure again. I don't even know if he had a mini big head. He may have had a little small or little big head figure. He may have had one of those, but you know, I don't think he's a guy that had a ton of merch like this. So I gotta say, I, I actually think it's a pretty cool piece. And it's also, since he's one of the less known guys, a little bit more affordable than the average wrestler. So on that note, it's kind of a nice way to buff up your collection too. As for articulation, he's got about the same as most Kara Pro or Kara Pro style figures have. The arms can go up and down. They probably come out. It looks like here they're in actually pretty stiff, but they probably will pop out. But I believe the waist will move. Let's find out. Yep, that moves. He heard the snap. So that's about really all he can do, and that's all any of these Kara Pro figures do. <laughs> really, that's the most you can ask for is that their arms move and their waist turns. So that's our look at Michiyoshi Ohara. It is not necessarily one of the best pro wrestling figures out there. And it's also not one of the most memorable, well-known characters either. But it's actually a very solid figure with a lot of good things to talk about. You know, a great paint job, really great likeness. It comes with a rubber mask, which is also really cool. You know, it makes you wonder why more American companies like Mattel don't include rubber masks to put on their figures when they have masked guys. Uh, case in point, the Mattel Andre the Giant figure, in fact, that had a mask, but it was just basically a separate head. So for guys who have worn these as entrances, you know, it's a good idea. It's interesting to consider that as an option. I think he's worth adding to your collection if you're into Japanese wrestling figures, not just as a completionist, but also just because it is a pretty nice looking figure. It holds up very well amongst other Japanese Kara Pro figures. So I'm Matthew from Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching this Japanese pro wrestling toy video. Hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed our look at Ohara today. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hey, give us a thumbs up while you're at it too. So we'll see you guys next time and as always remember, keep that fighting spirit burning.